Hi everyone and welcome to learn GCSE biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to be going through the protein synthesis topic which has been highly requested. It is one of the toughest topics on GCSE biology. Now I'm going to be going through things that are on the higher tier and the foundation tier. Now first of all what are proteins? So proteins are polymers. The monomers they're made up of are amino acids and they are joined together in a unique sequence. There's 20 different amino acids. You won't necessarily find all 20 in every single protein, um, but I'm just representing it here as this sequence, this chain of amino acids to make this polymer protein. And that chain of amino acids then gets folded up, so you fold all the sides on top of it itself, and you get a 3D shape. And depending on what 3D shape you get will determine the job the protein can do. So for example, you could have enzymes which have that unique 3D shape to create an active site complementary to the substrate. Hormones will have a unique 3D shape so they can attach onto their target organ. And some proteins are for structural support like collagen, which you find in your skin, which stops you from wrinkling. So that would have a really strong 3D shape. So how does DNA actually code for a protein then? And it's linked to this idea of the triplet code. So on your DNA, you have bases and those bases create a code. This sequence of letters is the genetic code. And every three letters or every three bases codes for one amino acid. So as you go along your DNA sequence, that's coding for one amino acid every three. Now, when we actually look at the whole process, there's going to be five other key parts to be aware of. DNA, RNA, ribosomes, carrier molecules, and complementary base pairing. So we're going to quickly go through those key elements, then we'll see the whole process of protein synthesis. So DNA and RNA, they are both nucleotides, almost identical. The key thing that's different is the bases that they have. So DNA has A, T, G, and C, and DNA can never leave the, leave the nucleus. RNA has A, U instead of T, G, and C, and RNA can leave the nucleus. And that is the whole purpose of RNA. Your DNA is your hard copy genetic code. And if it gets out of the nucleus, it's at risk of being broken down by enzymes. And if you lose that original copy, then that cell will, will die. So instead, RNA, because it's so similar in structure to DNA, in the nucleus will make a copy of your DNA. And that copy will then go into the cytoplasm and attach to the ribosome. Because if the copy gets broken down by the enzymes, it doesn't matter, because you just then go and make another copy. But you cannot lose your original, which is the DNA. So just to remind you then, when we say the RNA creates a copy of DNA, it only copies a small section to code for one protein. And that is what a gene is. It's a small section of DNA which codes for the sequence of amino acids to make a protein. So RNA copies one gene from the DNA. It then leaves the nucleus to be used to make the protein. So let's have a look how. It all involves the ribosome, a carrier molecule and the DNA. So the ribosomes I'm going to be showing here in black, we've got the nucleus containing the DNA and the carrier molecule we're going to see throughout the animation as an X shape and on top in pink in this example I've shown a particular amino acid. So we're going to go through six steps in this comic strip and then show you the finished one at the end. So step one, we've said a gene is a section of DNA. The DNA cannot leave the nucleus because if it does, it's at risk of being broken down and destroyed. So here we can see a gene, which is a small section of DNA on one of the chromosomes. And that gene is being copied into RNA. And it still works by complementary base pairing, but because it's RNA, there are only U bases instead of T. So A is complementary to U, and T is complementary to A, G to C, C to G. So all of that stage happens in the nucleus, but we now have the RNA copy of one gene. 
So that RNA copy is going to come out of the nucleus through these tiny gaps and it will attach onto a ribosome. When it is on the ribosome, this is now when that special carrier molecule can bring specific amino acids. And it will bring one particular amino acid for each triplet of bases. And that's what we're seeing here, our carrier molecule carrying an amino acid to that first triplet of bases. That will continue to happen along the RNA chain. And each time a new amino acid is brought, the amino acids are bonded together. So the ribosome moves along the RNA so that the carrier molecule can keep bringing new amino acids until we get to the very end of our chain and add on the final amino acid. Now when that happens, the amino acid sequence will detach and it's now ready to be folded up to make its unique 3D shape which links back to what we said earlier, it could be folding it to make a unique 3D shape, so we get this active site on an enzyme, or it could be folding it to make the unique shape of an antibody to attach to an antigen. So that is it, that is protein synthesis, and the key things are knowing that the RNA is a copy of the DNA, the RNA comes out of the nucleus and attaches to the ribosome, the ribosome holds it in this fixed position so the carrier molecule can bring the specific amino acids. Those amino acids then bond together. This happens all the way along the triplets of the RNA chain. And when we get to the final one, mRNA detaches. We have our final amino acid sequence to make our protein chain. That folds up to make our final finished 3D protein. So I hope you found that helpful today. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If there are any other GCSE videos you'd like, please comment below and I'll see how quickly I can make them for you.